Good morning, church. Can we stand this morning, please? It's a wonderful day in the name of the Lord. Amen. Nice, cool day this morning. Showers of blessing. It's a refreshing rain. It's a refreshing rain. The Lord has brought us through seven days. And he said, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a boost. Give you a refreshing rain to revitalize you. Amen. Everybody looking so wonderful this morning. I can see that your faces are shining. It reminds me of when Moses came down off the mountain. The countenance of God was upon his face. And he had to wear a veil. You guys look like that this morning. You know, seven days of prayer and fasting, it takes a toll on a person. It brings out the light of God in you. It brings out the countenance of God in you. It brings out the culture of God in you. It brings out the personality of God in you. Amen. And so today when I look at you guys, I see that being manifest in you. Can we give God praise this morning? You know, our fast is not over. we still got one more day to go. And how many of you know and believe that Jesus is the God of the 11th hour? Amen. It's not over till it's over, church. And today, we're still standing on God for our breakthrough. And today, we're still standing on God for all of the things that we have prayed for this last seven days. God declares that he is faithful to, and just to answer our call. Amen. And so today, this morning, I lift up my hand to the heavens from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. And I declare this morning in the name of Jesus Christ that every blessing in heaven be rained down upon you this morning. I declare over you today, household of God, that the hand of God is upon you this morning. I declare over you this morning, household of God, that the face of God shines upon you this morning. I declare upon you this morning, household of God, that you are the blessed of the Lord. Amen. Give him praise, church, and give him glory. Church, I welcome you this morning. On this, the seventh day, I welcome you this morning and give you the choices, blessings of God. Amen. The windows of heaven are open this morning, and the blessings of the Lord are raining down upon you. The storehouse of God is open this morning. And you can go in and you can take whatever it is that you want. And so this morning, that's exactly what we're going to do. And so I greet you and I welcome you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. I offer greetings this morning to all those who are all watching us on social media. We bless you. We give you praise this morning in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for standing with us during this week. We thank you for solidarity. We thank you for unity. We thank you for your amens and your hallelujahs. And we have seen the comments on our pages. We have seen the comments and we have seen the requests for your prayer. And let me tell you something. The prayer has never stopped the seven days. Amen. The prayer has never stopped the seven days. I think we have covered almost every category there is under the sun. Amen. And if you miss anything out, we're going to get it today. Amen. And so I thank you again in Jesus' mighty name. I praise you this morning, my God, and I give you praise. I worship you, my God, and I exalt your holy name. I declare this morning, Father, there is only one name under heaven, the name of Jesus Christ. I declare this morning, Father, that everything that we have done up until this morning, we do it to your glory, Father, to your name, Father, and to exalt you this day. I declare this day every praise will reach your heaven, Father. I declare this day that your angels will ascend and descend, Father, carrying the praises of your people to you this morning. I declare this morning, Father, that you will incline your ear towards our cry, Father, and that you will hear us, Father, as we call out unto you this morning. I bless you this morning. You are the God of the 11th hour. I bless you this morning. You are the God who hears our cry. I bless you this morning. You are the God who delivers us. Father, we come before you in the blessed assurance that you will deliver us today, Father. We come before you, Jesus, in the blessed assurance that you will, Father, provide for our every need. 
And so today, spread your wings over this assembly, Father, and over our sister churches, wherever they may be, Father. Spread your wings over them. Give us comfort today, Lord, and draw us closer to you as we come to draw close unto you. I give you praise, Jesus, and worship in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody bless? Amen. I said, is somebody blessed? Can somebody give Jesus all the glory in the house? Amen. It's the last day. Amen. It's the last day. And I love what Pastor Gary said. God has reserved his best for the last day. Amen. Somebody give him glory. Come on. Woo. Are you ready to praise God? Come on. Come on, put your hands together and clap. Yes.
somebody bless somebody give him glory in the house hallelujah King of kings and the Lord of lords. And as we prepare our hearts for worship, we raise our hands, Lord, in worship towards you. Hallelujah. Won't somebody just concentrate on the Lord? We worship.
great I am. We say we love you, the ever-living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God, and there is no other. We honor you, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. We honor you, the line of the tribe of Judah, the fairer than 10,000. Our Lord and our God, we give you praise. Father, it is the day of the Lord, and we rejoice and are glad in it this day. Let every praise of every nation and every tribe bring glory and honor and praise unto your name. Let every living thing give you praise this day. We uphold the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We glorify his name above every other name. And we declare your kingship and your rulership over this service right now. We declare you are the Christ over this service. You are the Christ over Christ's kingdom ministries. You are the Christ over United and Christ. And I declare you are the Christ in every home and loved one that is watching us here today. Father, thank you for the Spirit of the Lord God that is upon me this day. That I decrease, that you increase. And I thank you, Lord, because I speak your word. Your word will be like fire in my mouth. And may your word bring forth a hundredfold fruit. Even on this seventh day, you will perfect that which concerns him. And Lord, you will bring strength and encouragement for this new year. We give you praise now, Lord. Lead us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Well, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And welcome into the sanctuary of the Lord. It's good to have you here this morning. Uh, how many of you are here today? We know we have many family and friends. How many of you are here for the first time or visiting us? Won't you just raise your hand? We want to acknowledge you. I have some of my friends and family are there. Won't you give them a hand out there in the back? Welcome out there in the back. Whoa. Hallelujah. Beloved, you know, uh, 
I don't believe anything works by chance. And to those of you who have come here today, may the Lord grant you your heart's desire. May you experience your breakthrough. And may you experience your liberty from every hold of the enemy. As we sung, chains will be broken. And I meant that for every, we prayed that for every one of you. The chains will be broken. We started the fast and said, the word of the Lord that says, however be it, nothing goes except through fasting and prayer. And he said, then you can say to the mountain, move from hence to there, and it shall move. This day. This day. Somebody say this day. The mountain in my life shall move and be cast into the sea in Jesus name according to his word it shall be done give the Lord a praise somebody hallelujah and the word of the Lord this morning as I've uh, set a title is destiny rescuers and destiny realizes Taken in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Beloved, this being the seventh day of the fast. Now seven speaks prophetically. Seven in the Bible speaks about completion. And it speaks about physical and divine perfection in our lives. And I like to say as a servant of God. This is the desire of, of God for your lives. That we don't remain where we are. There is more. We don't have to remain in our failures. We don't have to remain in our sickness. We don't have to remain in our sorrow. We don't have to remain in our bitterness. We don't have to remain in our anger. But I say this day we, we have come to him. To perfect that which concerns us. That we, his chosen, will be able to fulfill our purpose and our destiny upon the earth. Can somebody say amen? How many of you want to be perfected? You are very few of you. How many of you desire to be perfected? Can I see your hands? I'm putting two hands up, brother. Hallelujah. And so let's get into the story. In 1 Samuel chapter 25, I'm going to go through some things there and I want you to be focused. Now recorded in, in this chapter is an awesome story of a destiny rescuer and a destiny realizer. It is a story of submission and courage and deliverance. It is a story of God's divine orchestration and God's divine intervention to rescue his beloved to save his beloved from destruction and failure so that his beloved will fulfill purpose and destiny that the call that his call upon his beloved and you are his beloved shall be realized it will not be tortured. It shall no longer be held in siege. It shall no longer hold you in contempt. It is a story where God begins to shift all things because of his love for his beloved. Now the story starts off by declaring Samuel died and was buried. And David arose and went and he went down in the wilderness how amazing that is it starts off someone dying and being buried and someone arising and moving I am saying to you today prophetically there is an arising and there is a good moving and going I'm declaring prophetically the things 
of your past is dead. As it is written, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It is buried. It is history. But behold, by the power of the living God, there shall be a resurrection. There will be a rising up and be the quickening of the true you again. Who you are will come to the forefront. The glory of the Lord will be manifest upon your life again. Can I hear amen somewhere? It is amazing that when God took a leader out, when one passed on, there was another ready. His kingdom will never lack. His kingdom will never lack. If even if you choose to be disobedient and don't take your stand and don't shake yourself to be what he created you to be, he's got reserved, hundreds reserved to take over what you were supposed to do. But I am saying today, no one is taking over. Whoa, come on somebody. No one is taking over. You see, God uh, uh, will do his part. That's for every one of you. He will do his part to help, even if you have fallen. He's already, he's shifting the heavens. He's shifting everything. There's a divine move to bring you back to that position. But beloved, the key is you. Your decision. And your determination, your choice, choices determines your outcome. And I'm just setting you up today. And I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit that you will be convicted today, here and now, to make the right choice and move forward to 2023. Can I hear amen, somebody? Now the story continues and we're getting into the story now. And there was a very rich man in Moab and he carried out his business in the region of Carmel where it, the name was Nabal. And Nabal was married to Abigail. And the Bible records that Abigail was a woman of good understanding and beautiful in appearance. In fact, there's only two other women that was given uh, this a, a, a praise in the Bible, and that was Rachel and Esther. Now Nabal, setting the foundation here, Nabal had his riches, he had 3,000 sheep, and he had 1,000 goats that grazed in the wilderness of Carmel. David and his mighty men that was on the run from Saul, because Saul, King Saul, wanted to kill David, the future king of Israel. And he was on run. And he was in the same wilderness as the wilderness where Nabal had all his sheep and his flock grazing. Are you getting the picture? David and his men were there. And while they were there in the wilderness... Obviously, they came across Nabal's shepherds and all the sheep and all the goats. But what he did, as what he was called to do over Israel, without Nabal knowing, he protected the shepherds and the flocks. That his men were there, they fellowship together and they watched. And at no time that he ever requested to take one animal for himself. Yet he was in need. He was in the wilderness. And he would have needed it. Now beloved to have protection of your greatest asset. A, a very rich man. To have free protection of your greatest asset. Especially an asset that is free for taking in the wilderness that is hostile 
that is full of thieves and robbers that can take away and destroy your wealth overnight for somebody to give you free protection without even asking, man, surely there's some reward. Surely there's some reward or some respect and some honor. Now, it was feast day. A day of generosity. A tradition that was held during the time of, uh, of shearing of the animals and the time of harvest. So David heard that Nabal was shearing the sheep in the wilderness. And so the Bible says he called 10 men. And he said, go to Nabal. And verse 6, it starts and he says, And David said to the men, And say to him, Peace be to you. Peace be to your house. And peace be to all you have. Tell them, tell Nabal, how we protected his men and his flock in the wilderness. Verse 8. Tell him, therefore, let my young men find favor in your eyes. For we come uh, on a feast day. Please give whatever you can uh, to the hand of your servants and to the son of David. No big demands. Wow. David approaches Nabal in the greatest humility to the extent of calling his men Nabal's servants and himself a son to Nabal. Can you imagine a king declaring, telling as a son to you, as a, a future king is telling this man, as a son to you, we ask you humbly to give us something. Now listen to me, this is David speaking. A mighty man of war greatly feared amongst warriors the future king of Israel is not even demanding but he's asking for just a little bit not even demanding payback for what he's done he said just give me a little bit but yet Nabal responds with contempt in verse 10 he says who is David now, now, beloved, he knows who David is. What he is saying. Who does David think he is? That he can come and just ask for things and make undue demands. His response was in direct insult to David. Because David was known and he was famous Throughout all Israel, in 1 Samuel 18, 5 and 7, he was the head of Saul's army. And he was accepted amongst all souls. He heard the song that was in 1 Samuel 18, when the women began to sing, David killed 10,000 and Saul killed thousands. This news was throughout all Israel. And yet this man comes and he says, who is this David? Let me tell you, his household knew, his household knew, the, who the future king is be, And yet, and yet you got an attitude with the king. I say to you, some of us got an attitude with the king. And the king is asking you just for a little, for all that I've done for you. I am talking about King Jesus. I'm talking about the king of kings. Nabal has got an attitude. Imagine having an attitude to a, a mighty warrior who can take you out. And especially you've got no backup. And I got the greatest army. Do you know David could have went, he sent 10 young men, not intimidating. He could have sent the 400 mighty warriors, went there, took what he want and went. Are you understanding? And many a time. When the servants of God approach in such humility. To say thank you. There is a resentment. There is a hostility. And then God sees. When God 
God sees is a judgment. That the servant of God don't know the judgment of God because he just turns away and walks away. And then we lose. We lose everything. David's men return. And they tell him what Nabal said. And immediately David reacted. Immediately without thinking, without thinking. And that's where the problem is. When he received the message what Nabal said. The future king of Israel is starting to make a fool of himself. Immediately he reacts. He reacts in 1 Samuel 25. Verse 13, and David said to his men, every man get up a sword. That's what happens. As soon as you hear something negative, you want to fight. You want to fight. You want to fight. He says the first thing comes in his head, bring the sword. Everyone get up your sword. And so about 400 men went with David to kill Nabal. And he wants to kill not only Nabal, he wants to kill every male in Nabal's household. Even the shearers. Man, come on, come on. And to add to it, David confirms his intent with the oath, increasing his guilt to another level. In 1 Samuel, you can read the 25, 22. You know, you understand when you make an oath, he says, you know what? Whatever you make an oath, uh, 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 whatever. I, 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 you know, I'll never die till I see this thing happen or this is going to happen. Beloved, don't play with words. Don't play with words. Don't, it will hold, it'll hold you bound till you die. Don't play with words. Don't make oaths. Don't speak rashly. 2023, life and death is the power of the tongue. You speak it, you will eat by it, and pastor can do nothing. We can have 21 days fast. You speak the wrong way, nothing. you rather have a bry every day and don't come to church for that prayer. Because it's not going to work. But if you humble yourself, it will work. As soon as he heard this bad report, David said, put on your sword. Let's take revenge. He said, then they're going to pay for it. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them who I am. I'm going to be there. I'm going to show them who I am. I'm going to show them who I am. Beloved, you know, one of the most dangerous things, one of the most dangerous things as, as servants of God and, and, and those who God bless, one of the most dangerous things, if the resources God given you, whether in, in anointing or whether in finances, whatever, you know, when you're super wealthy, because you've got resources and you use it for revenge, Yeah. You use a resource that God gives you to begin to destroy whom he created. There is a responsibility for the position you are in society. Don't use your resources. Don't use your resources to commit crime, to destroy others. Are you getting that? Beloved, David is acting outside the will of God. And that's how he is. He did not seek the Lord. Beloved, when things are bad, just go to the Lord. Just go to the Lord. It is strange, it is strange that earlier recorded in chapter 24, we find that David had the opportunity to kill Saul. Just before this. He had an opportunity to kill Saul. Now, you know, Saul was after him day and night, night and day with singing. Saul was, uh, uh, he was actually mad. He was gone mad to find and hunt David down. The Bible says he brought in 300 of the most elite squad in all of Israel to go and find this man, David. And in the same wilderness, in the wilderness of Mon, we find that he, uh, 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 when Saul is after and chasing him, what happens? God put him in a situation, you know, everyone 
has to do their business no matter how anointed you are. Even a king has to do his business. That means go to the toilet. No matter how, no matter how great you are, you got to poop. Okay, I mean, uh, you have to go to the toilet. And so what the Lord does, so not the, what the Lord, what the king does, he goes into the cave. How's this? He goes into the same cave to do his job where David and his men are. And he's alone. Because the king is not going to take his entourage now to go to the toilet. Please, you, you know that. Like, no one, come on, man. No matter how anointed you are, because it's the one time the king has to take up his robe. Because otherwise it'll all be messed. Can you understand now? He goes into the cave and David's men said, wow. For this day, the Lord has delivered Saul into your hands to kill. How easy it was. How easy it was. Remember, David was hunted like a dog day and night. The man that was hunting him like a dog is pooping in front of him. No shield, no nothing. And he's got the sword in his hand. Can you imagine? He was a sitting dog, cut with, with his pants down. He could do nothing. And so David, still in his anger, still in his anger, he goes there because the king got his rope parked one side on the rock. So he, while he's doing his job, David left him alone, goes to the king's, and he cuts a rope in the corner, and he takes and keeps it. And that day he goes, and then he shouts to the king, your servant loves you. Listening to all others. And you think I'm the bad one. But this is proof. If I am the bad one or not. See. See your robe. What's missing. You don't even know it was missing. I could have taken you out. But I will not touch God's anointed. I fear the living God. And he spared this man. Can you imagine? He spared a man. What's this? He spared that man that was hunting him down day and night, night and day to kill him. He spared this man. Their neighbor only said, I'm not going to give you nothing to eat. And David wants to kill him and kill his family and kill everything he has. How can it be? Can you understand? That's what the enemy does. It doesn't make sense, beloved. Beloved, you see, vengeance will blind you to act impulsively and to do foolish things. The word came on Sunday last week concerning forgiveness and repentance. And I heard on Wednesday, I think, Prof, you were on Wednesday. I was connected, by the way. And you were preaching a word. I said, your Prof is preaching my word. But I said, no, thank you, Lord. You, you are saying something to the house of Lord God. Samuel anointed him to be the next king. And David had a great future. Listen to me. Every one of you are anointed of God. Chosen of God. Born for a reason. For a time such as this. There is a future of hope. We can't mess up. Can I hear amen? You don't know what lies ahead. How many lives you will affect. That is going to hell. That is set for you to be a testimony. To share the gospel. To share your testimony. To bless them. But because of your attitude. You're not seeing them and they're going to hell. David listen to me. God provided for David in the wilderness. He didn't need neighbors. God would have made a plan elsewhere. Can I hear amen? But today I want to say thank God for divine orchestration. Thank God he, he sends messengers at the right time to give counsel, divine counsel, information to help that will prevent you from failure and falling. Now just before this, there's a powerful thing taking place. There's so many stories here, but I'm just giving you a snippet. Just before this year, the same situation with Saul. You know, when you talk about a messenger coming, and the story is also about the messengers playing. Just before this, we read in 1 Samuel 23, 27 to 29. Now, there's, there's the Saul's army, 3,000 fighting men. 
They were hunting David day and night from wilderness to wilderness, from mountain to mountain. Suddenly they heard he's here in this mountain, the rock. He came and David was hiding in this mountain. And so the army came and they surrounding this mountain. All his fighting men surrounded the mountain. And David was in a situation. There was nowhere to go. He was caught, let me tell you, almost like a rabbit in a trap. Can you understand? He was held. And what David did, he came down the mountain. And he was, came into the open. Listen to me. When you're open, you are open, you, you are done and dusted. David came down the mountain to find a place to flee. But he was surrounded. But what's this here? When David, in the nick of time, in the nick of time, before David can be captured, before David could be killed, in the nick of time, a servant, a messenger came to Saul. And messenger said, the Philistines are invading Jerusalem. And let me tell you something. Come now. What he pursued for months. What he pursued for months was right there. But at home, losing his kingdom, losing his castle. I get back to you, but I needed to go here. I want to say, listen to me. In the most appropriate time, there's a messenger coming. But what? Let watch this here. Revenge, revenge and anger could have turned Saul to take David. But his kingdom would have been lost then. He would have lost it all. And he would have made the biggest error. To touch God's anointing. How can it be? And so it in your life. Watch this. For, for a messenger to come. God divinely orchestrated the Philistines. To prepare an army. Well in time. To reach the city of Israel and Judah and all that there. And try to take occupation. In a time such where a messenger can run. For, for, I don't know, days or into the wilderness to reach a, a, a soul at the most critical time that David could not be captured. And many of you, God has been sending messages. God has been preparing you not to fall. But you're killing the messenger. You're killing the messenger. And so there's a messenger comes. Now there's another one. In 1 Samuel 25, 14. Now one young man came and told Abigail what Nabal did. And he says, watch this here. In verse 17. Now therefore, watch this here. This, I love these words. Know and consider what you will do. That's a key. Underline that 2023. Know and consider what you will do. For harm is going to determine to come. Therefore, consider what you're going to do. For harm is going to come. Are you understanding? Consider what you're going to do. 2023, I'm talking about the right things. For harm will come to you. All right? For harm is determined against our master and against his household. Abigail immediately. I love this. She immediately. No stories. No going to the neighbor and telling the same story now. And give your opinion. Give your opinion. No going then asking that other cousin now. You must phone 20 people. Because you're on WhatsApp. Hey, you know now. This decision here concerning my husband. This decision. Now you, you tell me if it's right. When the Lord is speaking, you want to go 20 WhatsApps. You see, whose voice we're listening to? 2023. Leave the neighbor. Leave the cousin. Leave the auntie. They're good. Sometimes God will send them. But hear the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts what is right and wrong. People, some of you are waiting for confirmation. You know, since, since I gave my heart to Jesus, one of the biggest words I learned in, in uh, you know, I wasn't sharp in English. One of the biggest words I heard in the church was confirmation. Every time I went to pray, I waited for God to confirm. 
Now I didn't understand. You know, they use heavy, Christians use heavy technology, heavy, heavy words now. I'm waiting for God to confirm, confirm. Hey, some of them are finished burying. I, God never confirmed nothing. I'm serious. What are you waiting for? If the Lord given your word, you have a witness in your heart. If it's, if it's not evil, do it. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. Who's waiting for confirmation? Hallelujah. I'm still young in my, in my message, but I'm staying. Because this day is a day of fasting. We're not looking forward to lunch. I'm feeding you the greatest thing to go home now. So don't worry about time. And she made haste when there was no time to deliberate. And she takes a consignment of food. I mean, you're going to read that. In, in verse 18, you can read that. Okay. That means they had so much of food at the tap. I mean, you're taking 200 loaves of bread. You're taking this, this. Who would go, which house got 200 loaves and, and all these things? Now, come on now. And yet Nebo, is, it is overflowing in his bands. The man who, who is a future king asking him for a little food. Beloved, she arrives in time, she goes. She tell her men, go before her. She said, now, <clears throat> I am going to stop this uh, wicked thing from happening to my house. Some of you only wake up after the house is destroyed. And come in for prayer, yeah. Finished. Because you were sleeping in the time of fire. And some of you were putting more fire. More fuel in the fire. And so she makes a decision. Immediately, my household will not be destroyed. This Nabal, he, he made a wrong decision. But I am taking this. And I am going to David. And she goes to David. She goes through the mountain areas. And she goes and sees David. And she falls on the ground. And she bows her head before him. And begins to speak to David. And she begins to cry out to David. For his grace and mercy. And I want to read this because this is where we are focusing on the message now. Can somebody say amen? You see, it takes me a long time to get to the message. Amen. I know you're not saying amen. Now let's just go to this. In 1 Samuel uh, 24. So she fell at his feet and said, oh my Lord. On me let this iniquity be. Whoa. Verse 25, please let not, not my Lord regard this scoundrel Nabal this day. For his name is so is he. And what's 26, I love this. And therefore my Lord, as the Lord lives, as your soul lives. Let's talk about the great God of Israel. As he lives, as David's souls live. Since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed. And from avenging yourself with your own hand. How awesome is this? She's giving him a prophecy. She's giving him a word. She said, hey, the hand of the Lord held you back. But this time nothing happened. She was the one that was there. Are you getting the word? Huh? But the, the key is here. What's it? Verse 28. Please forgive the trespass of your maidservant. For the Lord will certainly make you my Lord. An enduring house. She's telling David his future. She began to prophesy. In fact, it's the only person in the Bible, only woman in the Bible that has given the longest word, I want to say so-called prophetically and full of wisdom. The longest word and unbreaking word in the Bible was Abigail. And she tells to him, because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord and the evil is not found in you throughout your days. Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life. But the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God. Wow. She already knew about Saul pursuing him. So David, Nabal could not say, I don't know about the Saul and David issue. She said, I know there's a man chasing you. But what she did, she's prophesying. She said, your life is bound up in the, in the bundle of the Lord. Of the living. That means you can't die. How awesome word that is. 
And that's even awesome in prayer. And look at how she pushes it. She said, and let your God and the lives of your enemies, he shall sling out as the pocket of a sling. Reminding him of his time with Goliath, that God will throw them out like a rock from a sling. Your enemies that come to you. He's telling David this. And he says, and it will happen. It shall come to pass when the Lord has done for my Lord according to all the good that he has spoken concerning you and has appointed you ruler over Israel. Yo, yo, yo. Are you getting this? She is in that moment telling him, God appointed you ruler over Israel. This, that this will be no grief to you. No offense of the heart to my Lord. Either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord has dealt well with my Lord, then remember your maidservant. Come on. He said, don't let this offense make you shed blood. You understand? You're going to taint your hand as a future king. Then David. Man, listen here. David awesomely listened. A mighty warrior. A one who was so angry to kill a few minutes ago. A few minutes ago, suddenly, when the woman came and began to speak, I don't know because she was so beautiful or what, he got so carried away, he's listening. But the truth is, he listened. Because she's speaking of another language. A language he understood because he was so close to the Father. That's why you get the Psalms. When she was, what came out of the mouth was of God. That quickened him. And then what he says, he said, David said to Abigail, blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. And blessed is your advice and blessed are you because you have kept me this day from uh, coming in bloodshed and from avenging myself with my own hand. In verse 35, he tells her, go up in peace to your house. See, I've been, I have heeded to your voice and respected your person. Beloved, are you getting that? Abigail's appeals to David's forgiveness for her household. After David hears her out and a prophetic counsel, beloved, he acted righteously. He took a counsel and he stopped following through with his vengeful, with his vengeful action. He stopped going into sin. He stopped going to Nabal or Nabal to kill him. And what's there in verse 37 and 38? And God took action against Nabal. And God struck Nabal. And Nabal died. David declared in verse 39, For the Lord has returned the wickedness of Nabal on his own head. Now Nabal had to forgive for God to intervene. Some of you right now, you are carrying battles because you can't forgive. You are, it, is, it is killing you. It is killing you. As long as you don't forgive, the battle will be yours and not the Lord's. Now I'm saying when you forgive, God is not going to kill them. But God will turn their hearts to bring restoration. Can I hear amen? I say to you, forgive. Beloved, it's the hardest thing. I shared this many times. I had to, I had to forgive the man who murdered my father the same night. It wasn't easy. After killing him a million times and more plus, I, I, you know what? It's amazing in a moment of carnality. You can picture great things of how to do wicked. Serious. And I knew that day, or oh, by that night or the next day, I was going to commit a crime. Until you come to a place. I had to cross over a river. That's why I call it the land of milk and honey. The Mzukulu River. As I was crossing over the river, I think there was a washing. Something happened. In a short time, the 
Holy Spirit for all of you. In the moment I think of my silence, he managed to get it. In that moment, sir, when he said, forgive. I thought it was of the enemy, but in the end of the day, I've done it. Beloved, it is worth it. But it is worth it. It is worth it. David realized, <clears throat> let me just a few more moments and I'm done. David realized that his sinful actions would have brought him great misery. And he could have lost being the king over the kingdom of Israel. Like Saul, Saul lost it. Be careful to strike back. It is easy to do that. We all, we all intended to be careful to strike back. Be careful to take revenge. We all have to, we get angry for a moment, but turn after that anger. Can you understand? Even though I forgave that man, I went through many struggles. But I've, I've, come, I've come through. Because you know why? It may be the ploy of the enemy to stop your future. It may be the ploy that one moment he knows to derail you from your blessing, your miracle, your healing, and your deliverance. God can't act outside his word. I know that. Deuteronomy 32, 35, he said, vengeance is mine and recompense. I will, vengeance is mine, how's about that? And recompense, that means I will restore, I will restore, I will make it right, I will do. Listen to me, vengeance is mine. Let the battle be the Lord's. You see, David felt he was disrespected. He felt agitated. He, an immediate response, get the sword. But thank God, for godly advice. Thank God for messengers. Thank God for the Abigails in your life. David realized the ruin he is protected from. Beloved, you can cause yourself enormous harm if we don't release this. Year. You're not going to break through this year. Psalm 58, 11, surely the Lord judges the earth. Let it be. Now there's some characters here. David, number one, didn't react vengefully when he was corrected. But he releases a threefold blessing. Man, this is, this, is, this is why I was so crazy about this thing. I mean, David, he gets corrected and he releases a threefold blessing to Abigail. First he blesses God for sending Abigail. He said, blessed is the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. Yo, when someone comes to correct you, yo, I, he, I mean, are you getting this word? Are you getting this word? Verse 33, he said, bless is your advice and bless are you because you have kept me this day from coming to bloodshed and avenging myself at my hands. And they said, go in peace. How many of you bless those who correct you? How many of you react when someone corrects you and tells you you are wrong? It's a hard thing, but it is a necessary thing that tells you about your attitude, your ways, and your actions. But you know what it is sad? What is sad is when you start to correct people of their wrongdoings, they don't repent or change their ways. They show you up by leaving the church. Or they retaliate. Or they try to prove they are right. And just, or some of them, you tell them it goes in this year, it comes out in that year, and it means nothing. But you see, you can do all that, but you'll face the consequences. But I'm saying to you today, I stand here as a messenger. I come to you. I bring a word to you today. That means there is hope. There is, there is a future of hope. God wants you. Every one of you, no matter how bad your past is, I say 2023, a changeover. 
God can do it, I can't do it. God can do it. I bring you the message. Cast out vengeance. Repent. Forgive. Set free. Can I hear amen? Shout amen. Yeah, because your neighbor not listening. That's all you shout amen. Ask your, ask your neighbor now, what was the amen for? So they'll tell you. You know, if you fail, listen to me. Church, watch this here. It's a seven day. Seven day of perfection. If you fail, the whole thing is God is gracious. I want to kill you, but God is gracious. By the way, no, no, it's not right. God is gracious. Is that all right? I want you to know God is gracious. He for, forgot in a moment who he was, and that's what happens to us. We forget in a moment who we are, and we just shoot it. Sometimes even in the church, we forget where we are. And we forget who we are. And we forget who we're talking to. By the way, I want you to know, everyone you talk to, even if it's in the leadership, in any place, everyone you talk to has the same ranking before God. In his love, in his presence, you may have different levels of call. So when you address somebody, understand, the hand of God is upon that person as much as it is upon you. I don't want to play you up, Gary. I don't want to play you up. I don't want to play you up against Aston. I don't want to play you up against Amos and our servants of God here. Even if you think you are better than each other, you are not. It's not about that. It is about me too. I don't claim better than anyone. Can you understand? We're not there to play each other out. I want to say to you today, come on, beloved. David was reminded of his future. I'm reminding you, every one of you again, for a moment, can you think of your future? Some of you did great exploits and stopped. Okay, you maybe failed. So what's the problem? Shake yourself up. Rise up and go for it. Serious. Don't return. They say, don't return to the vomit. Leave it one side and let's go forward in Jesus' name. David had the resources and ability to commit the crime. And that was the sad part. But we spoke on that. Don't kill the messenger. Nabal. Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets. And stones, kills the prophet and stones those who are sent to her. Beloved, right now before you go, uh, I want the leadership outside the boat doors with all the buckets. Please take all the stones out and leave it in the bucket. Can have some fun. What I'm saying is a stone is not for pastor. We're carrying stones to hurt somebody. Maybe you're, you're, somebody did you down. Can you understand this thing now? Okay. Nabal, the one who lacks good sense. But watch it. Even Nabal could be used and blessed. You know, if Nabal, watch this. Nabal missed the, missed the biggest opportunity. He died for his stupidity. He missed the biggest opportunity. Imagine having the connection of the president. Everyone here moving the president, you know they're super blessed. So I'm saying, if you move with the king now, the future king, listen to me. You are, if, 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 if you fed the future king when he needed some meat and he needed some bread, even when the darkest hour because of David's heart, this man Nabal and his shearers, he would have had the most elite protection. Even if all his animals died in a famine, David would have fed him. He lost it all. He was struggling to keep the little. He didn't know David. If David became king, David could have taken all, everything from him. And so Nabal, what happened? He even lost his wife. David took his wife too. Please listen here. This prayer is not for you to take another man's wife. I see the guys are excited. I'm watching your eyes. I'm watching. I'm watching you. Watching you guys. Hey, you, you are bad guys. All I want to say today, watch this. 
a small blessing. A, a, a little kindness. All they wanted from neighbor. You know how he, he said, he says, I love what David says. He said, whatever, whatever you can on your heart, it's fine. Even if you send one sheep that is shared, or half a sheep, you understand? He was happy. I'm saying a little kindness. You never know. You never know. You never know. It'll catapult you to the greater future. A little kindness. That man was in a perfect position to help a king that was going to promote him to the greatest position or whatever it is. Many of you, many of you, you are in a perfect position. You are in a perfect position to be a blessing. No, you miss it. You not miss it. You'll miss it. I'm saying don't miss your opportunity. Let's cut all that out and go to Abigail. Who are the Abigails of your life? Have you cast them out of your life? Have you cast out their counsel? Have you ignored their counsel? God will send an Abigail to David. You are the Davids. You are like David. You are like the David. God is sending Abigails many times to you. You may be cast out many, but thank God there's another one coming. You know where that one is? He's standing behind the pulpit today. I know I'm not wearing a dress now. Don't look. But I'm beautiful like Abigail. You know? <laughs> We have to have a song. But you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying there's another message coming to say, let's get it right. Is that all right? Don't say amen and go and fight now at home. Beloved, listen to me. You know one of the things I know? You know in the heart of hearts when someone is coming to tell you something, it's right or wrong. Let's be, let's be honest now. Leave all the intellect and all that. You know now, if someone told you and you made wrong, you know in the heart of hearts you're right. He's, they're right. So I'm saying, come on, take it now. Act. You know, some of you in this household, in fact, we all can be Abigails. You understand? But be Abigails, like, be like the true Abigail. Don't go and say, now, Repent, you burn and you, oh, you'll die now. You, you understand? You, 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 they, you can be stunned with the correction, but in love. I know some of you are waiting now. What that person did, I'm going to go and tell them now. No, no, no. This is not about exposing sin. This is private. If the Lord will tell you to go and help someone to affect their destiny, then you do that. Not to destroy. Correction messenger was never there to destroy. Is that cool? She, re she reminded David of his future. That's what it's all about. I'm saying how many of you, Abigails, you will remind each other of the future. So when they fail, you tell them, this is what God has for you. Like the Abigail, you can be destiny savers, destiny protectors, destiny promoters. Imagine a shepherd's wife I had to remind the shepherd David, the shepherd king of his future. She takes the blame. To save the household. And so, in conclusion, somebody give the Lord a praise. I know some of you are praising for the conclusion. <laughs> I know what I'm sharing today, it was for a couple of weeks that I had this word, I shared it with uh, some of them. I know it was a word for the seventh day. I'm serious. Because we, like Gary said, we prayed, whatever we pray, but there are some things. New wine, not in the old wine skin. New wine, in new wineskins. God has great plans and purposes for each of us. Yet by something small, like an offense and anger, 
We can act on our feelings and derail and miss the plans and purposes of God in my life. I think there's many of us here have been in challenges. I, but I don't know why me, but I have to, let me tell you something. I think that's why God had made me to do the biggest because I had to cross forgiveness like you can't believe year after year. To the highest level, I get challenged. Let me tell you, I get angry. I get angry. But give me a day or two, I'm loving you. Thank God for those who remind us. Listen to me. This is where we're coming. Thank God for those who remind us who we are in Christ. Our God's purpose reminds us of our destiny, reminds us of our sin, reminds us of our wrong actions, and helps us, help prevent us from falling and missing our blessings. Dear family of God, the 2023 be a year where we focus our attention on the plans God has for us. Let us not be sidetracked by all these little issues, offenses, and sin. And you know what it says? It is the little foxes that spoil the vines. Let us help save people's lives from destruction and godly counsel. Let us be our brother's keeper. Let us, let, us, let us walk together in love. How pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. Let us help to point people to their given destiny. Don't take revenge. Let nothing stop God's blessing in your lives. Again, I say to you, know and consider before we act the repercussions of the harm that you will bring to your life. Know and consider that, that they, I want to say where there is sin, where there is no, where there is sin and no repentance, no rest restoration, no forgiveness, far greater trouble and harm will come to you. I am saying if there is no forgiveness and there is no restoration, let us go and let God. Let go and let God. Let us stand right now. Let us make right where we fail. Can I hear amen somebody? Be like David. Quick to repent when he was told of his wrongs. Be like Abigail. Quick to repent on behalf of our family. And be like a Abigail. Quick to lead somebody from committing a crime. And showing them a future. Like David. Let us make it to the throne. And let nothing come. And hinder us. From achieving that position in the Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Everybody raise your hand. Father this day. Your servant has delivered your word. And Lord I thank you this day. You want to judge the good in each one of us. Help us where we're struggling. You said you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens. So strengthen each one that will be easy to forgive, easy to bless. Father, help us, stop us from committing that crime and help us to focus on our destiny and help us to focus on our future. Today we repent where we failed. Lord, forgive us for where we failed. Help us where we slipped out. And Lord, as the messenger has spoken, this day we take heed of your word and we receive your word and we bless your messenger and we bless the Holy Ghost and we bless you, Jesus, and we bless you, Almighty God. Give the Lord a praise, somebody. With every head bowed and eyes closed as we're going to get ready, prophet. Every head bowed. How many here today have never declared Jesus Christ is Lord? 
And you know that you step far or you want to dedicate your heart to Jesus. Maybe it is a good time. And I want to invite you, if it is you, I'm not calling anyone to the front or whatever it is. If it is you, just raise your hand and say, me, Lord, I want to dedicate my heart to, I want 2023 to be a blessed year for me. I want to walk with you in 2020. I want your presence. If I die, I want to be in your presence. If it is you, just raise it high that I can see it. Is anyone? Thank you. No, no. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else there? Thank you, Jesus. May you, I pray this year that every one of you, if you're not a member of this church and you're not, if you are not uh, going any other church, please be committed in this household of God. Take your registration and be part of the church and be blessed in this church. God bless you. You may take your seat for a moment. We're going to do the announcements. It's going to be quick. Offering. We bless you and we're going. All right? Amen. Morning. Get me once again. Let me see by a show of hands who's visiting us for the first time. Wow. Dennis, you brought the whole crew. Good to see you. Would you just stand for a minute? We have a welcome pack. We're going to give you something. Would you just stand for a minute? While the ushers get to you. And while we're doing that, thank you for your online viewers for watching today. This is a seven day of fasting and prayer. Amen. It's a seven day of fasting and prayer. Amen. Something's about to shift today. And when the man of God opened the service, he says, Lord will come through the 11th hour. And I realize after we conclude the service tonight, it'll probably be the 11th hour. It'll be 11 hours from this morning. God's about to do something great as we conclude this afternoon, we will meet at 5 p.m. And if you're here this afternoon, and I know you will be, every one of you will be anointed. It's been on Pastor Anil's heart to anoint every one of you. As we seal you in the beginning, we will seal you in the end for the rest of the year. Amen. Amen. And we will have communion. So get here early. So you get a nice parking spot. We're going to have communion at 5 p.m. Grace, this afternoon, 5 p.m. Amen. Next Sunday, we have one service at 8.30 a.m. Next Sunday, one service. But the following Sunday, the 12th of February, we go back to two services. That's 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. And Children's Church will be at both services. The Tuesday after that, the 14th of February, who knows what day that is? No, that's day to fast and pray. We're having a prayer meeting. 14th of February, cancel your so-called Valentine's Day and have a night with Jesus. I like to have a night with Jesus. 14th February, fasting and prayer, we'll meet for the first Tuesday night at 7 p.m. There will be signs, there will be wonders, there will be miracles. Amen. CKM Bible School that you've been missing out on having withdrawal symptoms. CKM Bible School will reconvene on Wednesday, the 15th of February at 6.30 p.m. for the completion of the subjects. Wednesday, please diarize it, 15 February at 6.30 p.m. And our guys will be traveling from Port Chepstow to get here. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless them. To all the men, you are invited this Friday the 3rd. This Friday the 3rd at 7 p.m. at Christ Kingdom Ministry. Friday the 3rd, 7 p.m. Men, to all the men say Amen. Are there men in the house? Could you say amen? amen. That's good. Friday, 3rd of, 3rd of February, 7 p.m. at Christ Kingdom Ministries. Amen. I've been told that youth will be open on the 10th of February, the Friday after that. So after the men's fellowship, the next Friday will be youth. Our condolences this morning, God, to uh, Calvin and Vanessa Paul on the home call of the aunt. Uh, we pray that the Lord... And we thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost that gives them comfort and strength as they grieve. And we thank God that he brings to remembrance those that have been lost along the way. And he strengthens us. It's time for tithes and offering. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will men put into your bosom, will be put back into the bosom. And we stop there. But it goes on to say, for the same measure that you use, for the same seeds that you sow, for the same tithe that you sow, it would be measured back to you. 
And in my Bible it's read, so it's the word of the Lord. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put back into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Amen. This is a giving house. And we praise the Lord for that. But before we get to your tithes and offering, because I know some of you are changing the measure in your mind. Before we get to the tithes and offering, I want to bring your attention to this two thermometers. But it's income thermometers. It's to gauge the temperature of your sowing. It is for 2025. And our goal will be to reach 6 million. And next week, Sunday, this will be set up and it will be on our website. So you'll know where we're going. And you'll get the exact figures in there. But I need you to understand that this vision doesn't come from yesterday. It comes from many, many years. More than 17 years ago, the Lord has placed upon the heart of the father of the house this vision for 2025. I need Christ's kingdom ministries, your pastors, the ministers, the businessmen to stand with us as we from February. I don't know how we're going to do it. Some of us don't have it, but the Lord will make a way. So I'm asking you for a minimum pledge of a thousand rand for all the guys in this house. Because when we go out of this house, we need to know our house is sown, our house, house is taken care of. Amen? You're very quiet today. God is going to make divine provision. And the provision in this house is supernatural. For we are supernatural people. We have the name of Christ upon this house. We know that we will meet this. In fact, I'm not even waiting for 2025. I want this met this year. Prophetically, I want something to shift in the atmosphere. To the friends and associates of the prophetic where I've ministered in your house and I've not taken an offering, there's a bank account where you can put that money. There's a bank account that you can put your money. You know, this is a cause that is worthy of heaven's instruction. So 2025, it's happening. So from February I said that on Sunday, and I didn't know, uh, get this opportunity. I said uh, this Sunday that we would be asking you to fill in those pledge forms. I'm asking you, and I'm instructing as leaders in this house, that it should start at home. Because we need to practice what we preach, and everywhere we go, we've been giving them this United in Christ vision, and it's been so well met out of this house, that the house has to start enlarging their territory today. So bring your, don't look so solemn. Stand up with your tithes and offering. It seems that when we talk about money, you get a bit worried. But you're blessed. There's a word that before the end of March, there's going to be no one unemployed in the house. You are blessed. There's a word that in this fasting and prayer, the foundation for the year is set. You are blessed. There's words that's gone out in this time that's going to cause a shift. In your relationship with God, you are blessed. Father, we thank you that this house is blessed. We thank you that there is a divine connection in the financial realm in this house. We thank you that this year there will be testimonies upon testimonies from the north, south, east and west. We thank you that every strong man, every hold has been shackled up and chained and bound. And we release prosperity upon the house. We thank you for the tithes. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for your people that Lord have given. We thank you this day for the abundance of blessings. But what measure they give shall be given unto them. Pressed down, running over, so much that they cannot contain in Jesus' name. Just to help you while we're giving the offerings. Um. This church must be very encouraged and strong because when you see this United Christ Africa, you see a figure of six million. Don't sweat and stress. We got partners uh, in, in, uh, all over that we're connecting with that are all helping us to achieve something. We at Christ Kingdom Ministries, I personally have pushed in a figure of two million right till 2025 which I know that we can accomplish. So don't get frightened and leave the church. Some of you may give your 10 rand. Beloved, it is worth a million rand to us. You hear what I'm saying? Some of you can afford maybe 100 rand. We can do it. 
But like prophet said, there may be many of you can give a thousand rand. What it means is we need to go beyond that figure, all right? Because if we're going to touch the continent of Africa with revivals in every stadium, we need plenty. But thank God with all our partners, I've got the guys in United and Christ, they're standing with us. We're all going to work together. But prophet said the right thing. We are the leaders. Therefore, this house has to be faithful. And I pray the Lord will bless you. We prayed this week over your jobs, over your businesses. Listen, listen to me. The Lord will bless you. You're not going to stress to give. Can you understand now? So don't stress now. Everything will work out well. But the, when you pledge in your heart to give your 100 rand or come into whatever figure you want to give, cool. I want to say to you, the Lord will provide it. Let us worship the Lord and then we're going to release a blessing while we're there. And God Sweet is there. Holy heavens, let your praise go up as the walls come down. Our creation, everything went great, repeat the sound. Holy children, clean as your heart, your grace will die. It's Parking at the school is a bit inconvenient to walk a little bit, but if we can just be helpful about that, pray for us that we will be able to purchase the land around the church and to create all the facilities. And pray. Don't stress, we're not going to take our offering for that. But I'm praying that God will divinely, through faith across the world, with who we are meeting, God will sow. I'm prophesying the sea will give up its wealth. Let the land give up its wealth. Just one red diamond will sort it all out. Amen. We want to do that so we the, the, there's many, you know, find it inconvenient and they don't come because of parking. We have a problem with parking. 
But we have a dream to extend this church, which is too small. We're going to have one service for where God is taking us. We have a dream to build a youth center, a youth center that, that will be used also for the public to come under control to study, a full computer center for them to do their homework, their assignments, take them off with a coffee bar and all that there. But we want to do for Sydney and for all the surrounding areas that our, this, God brought us here in this area for a reason. The young generation will not die to be bound by addictions and the curse. But they will be educated and do great things. Can I hear? Amen. We want to build a children's church. Our children's church already is so small, they're struggling. But I want to build a big children's church and allow all the people and the young, the kids to come and be trained on a Sunday. It is fine. I have my own dream. My own dream if the Lord should allow. And that is to build a prayer center that will stand far above everyone where we'll raise up the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I desire that. But more so we start off with the land. They say, you know why I can ask for it? Sydney is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Who created land? It is time for a release. So bless you. We're looking forward this afternoon. Any one of you that needs special prayer, the pastors are here to pray with you. As I release you, you can be gone. But anyone who needs anointing for whatever it is, we're here to pray. Raise your hand. And so my father, I thank you for an awesome congregation. I thank you for the people of this house that are dedicated and committed. A people that love you people that are faithful and I pray this day in the name of Jesus even on the seventh day I cast every care upon you for your care whatever they sought you this week make a way let there be a turnaround of that situation and I pray the Lord our God will answer every prayer I thank you for every miracle now I thank you for every divine intervention now in Jesus name and I release the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit upon you. I release the blood of Jesus upon you. I pray His hand be upon you and His favor be upon you. God bless you. We'll see you later today. Amen.